Welcome back to MKE Gadgets. Today we're going to make a handy tap follower and you can use it on your drill press, your milling machine, or your lathe. The tap follower is used in a drill press, lathe, or milling machine. It will push the center hole on your tap handle and that will help you tap straight. So smaller taps don't have a hole in the back. So then you use a tap handle like this. Larger taps do have a centering hole and you use this style tap handle. What we're going to build today will work in both style tap handles. Many people have made tap handle followers on YouTube. Mine's going to be a little different. It's going to have two features that I've not seen used before. So let's go over our bill of materials. First, we're going to need 5 8 hex, and I'm using aluminum because it's easy to cut. And that's two and three quarters inches long. 5 16 tool steel, 0.2 inches long. 3 16 tool steel, 2.6 inches long. A compression spring, 5 8 diameter, inch and a half long. One socket head set screw, 3 16 16, 3 8 long. Today's work is going to be in a lathe, so I'll meet you over there. I'm at the lathe, we got our 5 8 aluminum in the chuck. We're going to face it off, center drill, drill 11 64ths, and then ream 3 16ths, one inch deep. I flip the stock around in the lathe. On the opposite side, we're gonna center drill. We're gonna drill 5 16 two inches deep. And then we're gonna turn the shoulder down. This diameter is turned a half inch, so I'll fit in my drill press, lathe, or milling machine chuck. First thing we do is face. Our next operation is tapping into the part 3A16 long enough so the set screw goes in there. So I want my tap handle to go in straight. If I do this by hand, I could tap it in crooked, and that's not what I want. So to help me, I'm going to use the first tap follower I made. So that just goes in your drill chuck. On your tailstock or your lathe. The tap follow is held in the chuck in the tailstock, and now it puts pressure on the chuck. So you can see as the tap goes into the part, I'm tapping, the spring pushes the probe and the tap follower out. What I like to improve on this is some kind of indication marks on this so I know how far I tapped here. If I put some grooves in here, a quarter inch apart, then I could easily tell how far my tap has traveled. So I'm tapped as far as I want to go. I just slide the tail stock back. And a set screw sets in there. Let's move on to the next part. 
We have the 3 16 drill rod tightening the chuck, and now I want to put a point on there. You don't want the stock sticking out too far because it'll bend over and break. So all I'm doing is having out far enough to get a nice point on there. The dimension of the angle is not critical as long as the end of your tap handle fits in there. And that fits in there real nice. I'm going to put multiple grooves in a quarter inch apart. This way when I'm tapping I can tell how deep I'm going. I zeroed out my veneer. I made it a quarter inch larger. And I'll just pull the stock out. With five grooves in there, before I cut it off to length, I'll hit it with a little emery paper. Okay, the final part today is a little bushing. And this slides over the pointer part that we just made. And this holds the spring back. It's 5 16 drill rod. We're gonna drill 11 64 and then we're gonna ream it 186 and a half thousandths. We'll cut it off at 200 thousandths long. This will be a press fit. thousands long. Before I cut it completely off, there's usually a burr on the end and right where the cutoff blade is. Take a file with a handle and carefully remove that burr. With all the parts machined, it's time for assembly. The bushing was pressed on. If it's loose, a little drop of CA glue will work a wonders. This should slide freely into the body. Push the spring on top, then your set screw. At the lathe, I deburred all the edges. I put a little groove in there so I could tell the two apart. This one has the indicator grooves. A quarter inch apart so as you're tapping you can tell how deep you're going. The second unique feature on this is the hex. It's not going to roll away on you. You throw it on your bench or on your lathe it's not going to roll very far before it stops. This one's just a little unique from any one I've seen before. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe and share. Thank you for viewing. See you tomorrow.